Mexico traffic. Spring 750 Super Duty is going to be departing runway 24. will be a stop departure for Mexico. All right, let's check for traffic. Everything's good. Downwind looks clear. We'll do a short takeoff. Got a little bit of flaps in. We'll have the stick back quite a ways before takeoff. Add brakes, add power, and then release, and the nose comes up instantly almost. We'll line up here on the threshold line. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Here we go.
visibility. You can move the instrument panel, the unpanel. I have it in front of me if you wanted more leg room or visibility. Yeah, there's actually a ton of space. Um, much more than I'm used to. Right, so let's let's talk about that. So I'm right at six foot and you're what's your height? Almost six six. Six six. You look like you've got about four to five inches yeah, still ahead. Yeah, even, even with a fairly thick uh, headset right. on on top, it's uh, there's plenty of room. I never even had to think about it. Your feet awesome. are on the rudder pedals. You have no problem. You could go forward as you build it in another inch or so to straighten it out. You got plenty of room. There's plenty of room. I mean, I can. Wow. Certainly with that panel, I can uh, uh, stretch my legs right out. I can put my feet flat on the floor, which, you know, is sort of a novel thing. So you can do that in any other airplane, right? Not really. I mean, you, you know, flew at Mooney for many years, and certainly with the panel there, I mean, it was a very different fit. I mean, this feels uh, uh, very luxurious by comparison. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. It's a great thing. And it's easy to get in and out of because the, the struts are on the rear side, so you enter it from the front. Yeah. And the bumble, bumble doors go up. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never flown a, uh, a center stick airplane before, too, and this is, uh, I mean, it's really kind of nice. You, you've got all this space here, right? You know, I mean, as a passenger especially, I mean, uh, you know, flying with uh, family members, I can see, you know, that being a plus or having a stick, you know, right. there as well. So. Right, and you might want to customize our wide stick just to make it a little bit taller because you're, you know, you're yeah. a little bit taller. And that's what customers can do. They can customize that center stick to, you know, whatever height they'd like. Go ahead, turn it back to the north area. Yep. Yeah, lovely day. It's uh, it's really just struck by the the view that we have. I mean, that's with the bubble doors, and you know, I can pretty much except for right behind me, I can look in any direction. And it, it feels like uh, more like a helicopter, you know, experience right. in some ways. Right, exactly. So uh, you and your daughter uh, spent a lot of time at our booth at Oshkosh, sitting in the airplane, asking questions and deciding, uh, you know, if you did go with the plane, uh, what kind of panel. I know that was a big discussion between yeah. you and your daughter. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. I think your daughter likes conventional panels. Yeah, strangely, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a shock. My uh, my daughter is much more of a traditionalist than I am. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then uh, you signed up for the rudder workshop right after Oshkosh, and you and your daughter are here the last uh, day and a half building the rudder, and you finished the rudder uh, just this morning, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah, and it was, it's been a really, really a fun experience being down here at the factory, actually. I mean, just, uh, you know, I mean, we, we kind of viewed, uh, and it sort of viewed taking on the airplane project as kind of a family thing, a family affair, and, uh, you know, also we're kind of joining an extended family and uh, being able to, you know, talk with you guys at Oshkosh and, you know, now here at the factory. I mean, it's been just really clear that, uh, you know, you put a lot of effort into making sure that people are successful, and uh, um, and it's uh, you know we that was important to us because uh, that wasn't universal. I mean, sadly, right? Um, but with folks we talked to, but uh, uh, but with uh, Zenith and you guys, I mean, I've had nothing but you know. Uh, you know, you've been willing to answer all my silly questions. <laughs> right, and you know, you know, we we treat our customers like family too. You know, we're we're not in it for the business. Yes, we do have a business we have to run, but uh, we enjoy it so much, and we want to make success for our customers. And we treat you like family. You know, if you have problems, call up any time. You know, or come to the factory any time. You know. Yeah, we've we've had a really great experience down here, and I mean, building the rudder, it went together. Honestly, a lot easier than I even anticipated. I mean, I didn't really come in with, uh, you know, any experience sort of building on my own. And, um, you know, we got it together, uh, I think, you know, uh, might have been the first ones done and a little bit unexpected. But, you know, we had a great time, my daughter and I, just, uh, you know, putting that together and, you know, having that project. And it gives me a real sense of what the rest of the build is going to look like. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, it was a really time well spent. Right, and the rest of the kit is identical to what you did on the rudders. Uh, the same, uh, you uh, IPLs for the instructions. Uh, you have the drawings in front of you. And then when you're at home, you have the e drawings too, if you want to, to bring up and, and look at the parts in a in a in a CAD file system. 
uh, so like a solid works. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't need that because that's just going to take more time away from building. You can build a fleet airplane just by the straight uh, blueprints drawings. So, uh, you know, don't get caught up in so many different resources. Uh, just get in there and uh, start building the parts. And well, it was amazing how, how quickly it went together, just having those match drill poles. I mean, we didn't really have to do any drilling and on our, our rudder for the Super Duty, and uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it went together just uh, very quickly, very simply. I mean, if the rest of the airplane is that way, then I, that takes a lot of stress off of whether or not, you know, we're actually going to be able to complete it. But you can, in the, in the big... What you need to really think about is you need to touch the project at least once a week. If you touch it once a week, you'll stay focused, you know where you are, you're at in your drawings, you'll know where all your tools are located, and you'll find that if you touch it once a week, let's say I'm only going to work on it 15 minutes today, you'll find you're in yeah. there four or five hours. Yeah. And you know, you've got two daughters and a wife that's probably going to help you a little bit. You can give them a few little projects, you know, say, hey, today <laughs> yeah. I want you to work on this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely can see that happening. I mean, we're we're planning on at least for the parts that we can do it, actually building it, uh, right. kind of at our house in the garage before we have to move uh, move it out to the airport. And uh, I think that just that the proximity should help a lot too, being able to just you know not have the barrier of having to get in the car and drive to the airport, but right. being able to kind of work on things, you know, right there. Right, you know, because, you know, if, uh, you know, let's say the wife is cooking dinner and you got 30 minutes, well, you can run out in the garage and do something real quick, you know? Exactly. All right, well, let's, uh, we're getting close to the airport. Let's uh, set up for a landing and uh, show you a short landing and, uh, all right, see how it goes. Okay, we're going to do a pre-landing checklist, gas, undercarriage, mixture prop, seat belts. Pretty simple checklist. What I'll do is I'll enter a downwind, beam the numbers, bring back power, bleed off the airspeed to the white arc, add a little bit of flap, start my descent, and start uh, base to final. Dusters spraying out here today. All looks great. A little choppy over the airport. Mexico traffic. Funnel is entering left in one for runway two more minutes ago. Yeah, it really seems to be handling the chopping as well, though. It does. Oh, it's, you know, you got quite a bit of dihedral and you got a thick airfoil, so it's, uh, it's a very stable aircraft in that way. you kind of maintain a close pattern. You know, pretty much when you uh, start deploying the flaps, you turn base to final. And the part of the reason you can do all of that is you have excellent visibility. You know, you can always see everything. You don't need these long patterns because you can't see out of the cockpit. Mexico traffic, Spiramon is left base for 24 Mexico. A little bit of crosswind, looks like about seven, eight knots, uh, looks like about 40 degrees. I can see the wind suck, so that's a good thing to check out to see how it lands on the crosswind. We've got a full moving rudder, so we've got a lot of rudder authority. 
Uh, basically, once you touch one wheel on the ground, your crosswind is probably pretty much complete. Mexico traffic, Bravo, short final for runway two for Mexico. Tires make a squeech. Yeah. Right That's all the there line. is. Right on the line. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed uh, taking you and your daughter up flying, and uh, yeah, it was really a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you guys, you know, you're welcome to call or come by anytime when you're building the rest of the kit for sure. <laughs>